Hey, Nano Banana, restore this vintage photo as if it were taken by a high-powered modern DSLR. We have a photo of a man in the Navy, and this is the restoration. Here's another example. This is of a woman, and this is the restoration. Photo restoration is super popular right now. And in this video, I'm actually going to show you how to build a one-page web app that does exactly this. There's a market for this right now. The new Gemini image model Nano Banana can do this. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to build it out in bubble.io. It should take us less than 30 minutes and then you can start serving customers worldwide. Okay, here I am in bubble and I'm starting with a blank page. But first I'm going to go to chat GPT. We're going to click on the plus icon here and go create image and I'm going to prompt it. I want a simple UI design for my one page browser app that takes old photos and restores them using an AI image generator. So let's see if ChatGPT can actually design my one page website. And this is our results. So yeah, very simple. There's definitely some things I'd probably want to add to this one page app, but I think it's a good starting point. So let's copy this design in bubble. So I'm going to double click on the page. I'm going to go to layout, change this to a column and then shrink the default builder width a tiny bit so I can see the full page what I'm working on. Want some text that says restore old photos. Let's drop some text in there. We'll go restore old photos. We're going to make this a heading. We're going to center it into the middle of the page and then add a top margin. Next is two pictures, the original and the restored to give the site's visitor an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to add two image elements to the page. Let's copy this control V. I'm going to grab each of these right click group elements in a row container. Let's click on that group. Go to layout. We're going to fit width to content center it in the middle of the page. Let's click on that text and add a bottom margin as well. And in this group, we want to apply gap spacing between elements. And we're also going to give a 25 pixel column gap to space these out. From that Reddit thread, I'm going to grab this image, save it to my computer, do the same with the old one. There we go. Save to my computer. It wants me to show the original one first and then the restored one. So let's go original here, upload that image. There we go. That's the first image. And now I'm going to upload the restored version. Looks good. I'm going to go to each of these, scroll down to roundness. We're going to put a 20 pixels roundness on it and do the same for this one as well. And there it's looking a little bit more like the chat GPT image. Next, it wants some text below the image original and restored. Let's grab that text element. I'm going to drop it in that group. First one is original. Let's make it a bit bigger, maybe bold it as well. Click on this image, right click group elements in a column container. We're going to apply a 15 pixel gap between the image and the text. Then let's center the text. I'm going to copy this text, paste it into the group. Click this text, hold shift, right click, column container, and then write restored for this one. Okay, there we go. The next section is an upload an old photo input. So back in bubble, I'm going to look for picture uploader. There it is right here. Let's drag it onto the page. It wants me to write upload an old photo. Let's make that font a bit larger. Looks like some gray dashes around the input. Instead of solid border, I'm going to do dashed and let's make it a little bit darker. Let's center it on the page. We're going to do a 25 pixel margin from the top. There we go. Last but not least, there's the restore button. So let's grab a button element, drag it onto the page. I'm going to center it. Let's do a 25 pixel margin again on the button. It says restore and we want to make it a tiny bit longer. So instead of 24 padding, let's go 50 padding. We'll do that on each side. The text should probably be a bit larger as well. There we go. Restore. Actually, let's make it even longer. And then I'm going to scroll down to roundness. Let's make it a little more round. Let's go perhaps 20 there. We'll make it look like this. And let's add another 25 pixels from the bottom. And if I preview my apps page, it looks something like this. I'm going to clean this up a tiny bit. Let's make this a little smaller for the text. I also want to add some text at the bottom of the page. All photos uploaded must be owned 
by the uploader and we'll make this really small and a lighter gray so it doesn't really stand out. Let's go back to the page and refresh and there we go. Okay, the next step is to actually make this work. So how are we going to restore photos using Gemini's new image model, Nano Banana? And for that, we're gonna use the API connector. So go to plugins, make sure you install API connector, click on add another API. Let's call this Nano Banana. Then we're gonna to go to Google AI Studio and in the bottom left corner, click get an API key then create API key. There, my API key has been generated. I'm going to copy it, click add a shared header. I'm gonna paste that API key in. And then for the key, we're typing x-goog-api-key. Next, for the actual API call, expand this call. We're gonna name it restore old photo. This is gonna be used as an action and it's a post request to this URL. I'll leave this URL in the description below, but if you look on the nano banana docs from Google, you're posting to generative language dot Google APIs.com. And then at the end, it's the model Gemini 2.5 flash image preview for the JSON body. You're going to paste this in. I'll also leave this entire JSON in the description below. The only thing we're going to need for dynamic data is obviously the image that the user uploads. So in the data section, I'm going to delete all of this. We're going to use caret bracket image and caret bracket. Clicking outside the API connector is going to open up this input now. Uncheck private. I'm going to take a random base 64 image just so that we can initialize the API call. Click include errors in response and then click initialize call. After a few seconds, you're going to get back this successful API message. Then I can go to show raw data. I can see exactly what the API call looks like. Now I can click save. I'm going to need to add another plugin. I'm going to search for base 64 and install this top one. It's called base 64 uploader and downloader. So let's install this plugin. Now back on our page, I'm going to drag one more image onto the page. This is going to be the result. I'm going to center it. Now I'm going to click on the restore button, go add workflow. When this button is clicked, we are going to search for nano banana restore old photo. The image is going to be a dynamic data. It's going to be picture uploaders value encoded in base 64. So it's going to take whatever photo was uploaded, encode it into base 64 so we can send it via the API. And then we're going to get a response back. That's also a base 64 image and then convert that base 64 image so that the user can see and download it. So the next step here is going to be that easy uploader. We need to fill in the app name. You'll find that in the URL after ID. So I'm going to paste that in here. The contents is going to be the result of step one. That's the result of that API call. We're going to go body candidates, first item, content parts, first item, inline data. We can call this image.jpg and then I'm going to go to the image. I'm going to click on the info button up here. We're going to add a custom state. That state name is going to be image and that state type is image as well. Let's hit create. And then for the dynamic image, it's going to be this elements image. Now at the end of that workflow, we are going to set the state of an element. We're going to click on that image and the custom state is going to be image. And that value is going to be the result of step two's body. So to make it a little less confusing, let's rename this element restored photo. The restored photos element has a custom state of an image and the type of that custom state is image. I could also just call this state. So the custom state is an image. What's going to display in this element is that custom state. And we set that custom state to the result of the API call. And we need this extra step because we need to convert that base 64 string of text into an actual image. Okay, now I can test it out. Here I found an old photo of a woman. I'm gonna copy this image to my computer. Let's go into my web app, upload that image, and then click restore. And this was the result. Absolutely stunning, I love it. Now the user can right click, open image in new tab or save it to their computer. 
There are some other things you could do with this one page app. You can content lock it. So in order for them to restore an old photo, they have to create an account. You can maybe make a credit system. Each user gets one free credit per day. If they want to purchase more, they can pay as you go or sign up for a subscription. You could also keep this one page app completely free and just run Google AdSense ads around the page. And if you SEO optimize this one page app for the keywords around restore old photos or photo restoration, you can start getting search traffic from Google and start getting visitors to your website. If building a custom one page web app interests you, this is the last month this course is going to be available. It's called how to build a custom AI app. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below. I'm the teacher for this web app. If we click on view the syllabus, I start you off with a few free AI templates. So you don't have to design anything yourself. Then we go into bubble fundamentals. I teach you some advanced bubble concepts, show you how to add all the AI features and also how to monetize setting up Stripe, making a one-time payment for lifetime access, charging subscriptions, a credit system and free trials. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal YouTube watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there later.